national something or the other? You don't have to go to your book, man. You, you, you ask the question. What was the question? What day was celebrated on the 15th of June? May. And I cannot answer that question. Okay, it's all right, it's all right. I can answer the question because I didn't know. All right. Uh, I mean, Angie, you didn't know either. No. Brother John didn't know either. Brother Stanley, you were here? You were here? Yeah, oh, you can't relate. You can't relate. It was the International Day of the, of the Family. Right, the International Day of the Family. And uh, I, that prompted me to do research on the family. Right? The International Day of the Family. I have uh, questions as, as usual, and my question to you, one of them already is, how is your relationship with your family? How is your relationship with your family? And as Emerson uh, said this morning, or yeah, said, family is being used now as a broad term, broad term, all right? Not, not the people who live in your home, we're not confined it to those people, all right? Not the people who worship with you, we're not confined it to those people. We are confined it to the people that you encounter wherever you go. How is your relationship uh, with those people? How is your relationship with those people. All right? Next question is, my relationship with my family a proper reflection? Is it a proper reflection of my heavenly standing? Is my relationship with my family a proper reflection of my standing in Jesus Christ? I'll ask the question in a different way now. Do I respond to people based on how they treat me? Or do I respond to people based on the fact that I am seated in Jesus Christ, I am a Christian, I am a person who, I have Jesus Christ living in me, and therefore, I react to people based on the fact that Christ is in me, and that whatever I do, I do it to please God. So, that is... Uh, where we're going to be looking at this morning, what we're going to be looking at. The song that was sung last, I will not go back. I will not go back. That's a serious song. Very, very serious, you know. I will not go back to the place that I used to be. 
Now, the, the, the sad thing about that is that people come into church but they, they come out of the world for that way but they do not leave the world behind. So when they come in, they bring the world with them. So therefore, if we do that, then we can easily say, I won't go back. Because you don't have to go back. You have it with you. Right? If you had left it, then you would probably go back. But if you brought it with you, why do you have to go back? Huh? Now let me, uh, when I say that God's people are, there's something good about, sweet about God's people, and something strange about God's people, you know, we come out of the world, rather than leaving everything behind. Remember, uh, God spoke to Abraham, then God, God, had picked Abraham, you remember that story? And what did God tell him? Huh? Leave everything. You know why you know why God why God told him that? Huh? A new start, a new beginning. Because he knew that had he brought even one family member with him. Huh? It might have terminated the purpose. Alright? So when God tells us move, we have to make sure that it is a Complete break. Complete break. Complete break. Alright, so I, that is why we get into trouble. Because we, we, we don't make that complete break. So I wouldn't go back. I would not go back. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Let's, let's look to reading. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. Because of the time, I'm starting in the middle of the sermon. I'm not going to the beginning. So I'm starting in the middle. All right? I want to focus on, on the change. The change. That last song that we sang. The change. So let us focus on the change. Colossians chapter 1. Uh, uh, chapter 3. What says there? If you then be... In other words, if you are a believer, if you are a Christian, then Okay, okay. In other words, if you say that you're a Christian, it means that you're identifying with Jesus Christ. Is that correct? Huh? You are identifying with Jesus Christ. You are seated where? Based on what the Bible says, as a Christian, you are seated where? In heavenly places. In heavenly places before. Now, how can you be seated down here in this church right now and be seated in heaven also? How, how is that possible? Huh? How is that possible? Huh? I, I, I want you to talk to me. How is it possible that we can be seated in heavenly places with Jesus Christ and yet we're here sitting down in church and mobile in the Holy Spirit? How, how is that possible? If you have a relationship with Christ? Yes. We are in Him now. We are in Him now. Wherever He is, we are. So therefore we can say, if He's up there in heaven, we are there too. That's how it's going to be, Brother John. <laughs> huh? If we are here and he is up there, then we, we are up there too. Okay? Right, so, so let us say then that uh, the step one refers to the spiritual and not the physical. Alright? It refers to the spiritual and not the, the physical. Alright? So we are seated in heavenly places. Alright? Seated in heavenly places. So that tells me that the position that I am in, I my behavior now must be fit that the uh, position. Sure. Huh? Right. The position that I am in, my behavior 
must be fit that position. All right? Now, when, when I, I'm speaking to the ladies, before you got married, you were a what? A lady? Is that correct? Huh? Yeah. And you behave like a lady. Yeah. All right? Now, when, when you got married, did you have to adjust your, your, your lifestyle? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Right? Yes. Yes. And then when you became a mother, you, you had to do more adjustments. Right? So your behavior be feeling what? Your, your position. Alright? So when we were out there in the world, we behave as the world behave. Okay? And I know it says we have been changed. Is that what we said this morning? We have been changed. So therefore, behavior. Behavior. Alright? Behavior. Right? Faith in Jesus Christ calls for a radical change in my behavior. Radical change in my behavior. A radical change means that everybody can... Huh? That radical change means that everybody can what? See it, yes. Everybody can see it. Everybody can see the change. Alright? So, Philippians 4, verse 8. Let's go to Philippians 4, verse 8. Philippians 4, verse 8. Right? The way I used to think, I cannot think any longer. Alright? The thoughts that I used to dwell on the harbor, I cannot continue to do that. Philippians says what? Whatsoever, let's read it. Whatsoever things are true, honest, whatsoever things are just, pure, lovely, good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise. So our thinking pattern must change. Isaiah 55, let's see what Isaiah 55, uh, 55, 8 and 9, what those verses tell us. Alright, and, and, and Isaiah 55 tells us why our thinking pattern must change. Alright, let's read it. For my thoughts are not your, neither are my ways your ways, says the Lord. And then he goes on, for heavens are higher so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts. So you, you see why we can't continue thinking the same way? Huh? We have to elevate our thinking now to the level of Christ thinking. The way how he thinks, we have to think now. The question is, do, do we do it? Do we do that? Huh? Do we do that? When we are converted, when we are Christians, all right, our ways, our principles, and, and that was the Sunday school lesson this morning. Is that correct? Yes. Talk about principles. Uh, as a parent, you have to do what? Establish principles, values, and make sure that the children that you brought into this world do what? Uh, adhere to them. Huh? And, and as uh, our, our friend at the back would say, if, if they don't adhere to those principles, uh, what would happen? If you come in, if you were to come in at 8 and you come in at 5 past 8, what happens? The door is shut. The door is shut. Why? Because you lay down your principles and you're going to stick to your principles. Alright? As a Christian, whose principles are we following? Huh? We're following the principles of God. So when we deviate from those principles, it means that, that we are what? We're rebelling against God. Huh? We, yeah, we're, we're disobedient. We are rebelling against God. You know when it comes to the family, God set down a blueprint. Huh? You know what was the blueprint? What was the blueprint? One man one woman until death, those were. And then 
the children will come, right? And God set the rules for the husband, the mother, and even the children. And anytime we deviate from those blueprints or principles of God, we're going to ask for trouble. Huh? We're going to ask for trouble. The original purpose of the family was for harmonious living. Is that correct? Yes. Harmonious living. Fellowship. Companionship. Yes. The Bible says that when God looked at man, he said, it is not good. It is not good that you be alone. Therefore, I am going to bring somebody to keep your company. Harmonious living. But you know that even though God had that blueprint, a lot of those people that he chose <coughs> rebelled against that blueprint. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And you know what happened when they rebelled against the blueprint? Oh. Trouble in the camp. Trouble in the family. And we can start from the very beginning. The very beginning. Adam and Eve, first family. Say, what happened? They played games started. Huh? And they were kicked out of the garden. Abraham, picked by God. God says, I want you. Huh? Did, did Abraham live up to that expectation? One man, one woman? Huh? What did he do? Huh? He had somebody else. Is that correct? Yes. And what, what was the result of that? Huh? Jealousy, confusion, conflict. And, and, and listen, the poor woman and the son were kicked out of the family. Is that correct? Kicked out of the family. Trouble. Anytime we deviate from God's blueprint, there's going to be trouble. There will be trouble. There was a man called David. Huh? He deviated also, right? And what happened to him? What happened to his family? Huh? Not enough trouble. Yeah. We cannot ignore God's blueprint. Can't ignore God's blueprint. And, and, and we can go on and on. Anytime we deviate from God's blueprint. Uh, uh, let me put it this way. Sin will destroy any family. Right? Sin will destroy any family. Whether it is your blood family, whether it is your church family, whether it is your work family, as long as sin is there, it will destroy that family. So what we have to do then, keep sin out of it. Keep sin out of it. Alright? But, thank God, we have been changed. Alright? We have been changed. We are following God's blueprint, right? Is that correct? And therefore, there is no trouble in our family, right? Huh? There is harmonious living in our family. Is that correct? Huh? There is harmonious. We have moved away from sin. And if sin is going to destroy the family, and we have moved away from sin, therefore, there ought to be harmonious living in our families. And if there is no harmonious living in our families, what is the conclusion? There must be sin. There must be sin. And what does God say about sin? Huh? What does God... But we... Ben, listen. When we sing the song, I have been changed, that means I have moved away from sin and I'm now living following the principles of God. So let us, let us not let us not get confused. All right, let us not get confused. Your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Matthew six thirty three. Read up, pick up. Uh, Matthew six thirty three. Shakilia, you're sleeping up there. So I'll give us the scripture, please. Matthew six. Let's read it. But seek ye first. And his righteousness. What are we supposed to seek? 
righteousness. Righteousness, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All right? In other words, they're seeking his thoughts, his way of thinking. They're going after his way of doing things. So we should devote our time to doing things the way God wants us to do them. His righteousness, his right living, the right way of doing things. The question is, how do we seek his righteousness? How, how, do, how, how am I going to seek God's righteousness? I'm going to seek God's righteous, righteousness by delving where? Into his word. By delving into his word. That's how I'm going to do it. Delve into his word. So, the more of the word that I have in me, the more faith I am going to have. And the Bible says what? I cannot please God. What it says? I cannot please God without faith. So if I have more faith, it means what? What is the result of having more faith? More pleasing. Huh? I, because I, in other words, I can please God better. So, seek God's kingdom by delving into his word. So that tells me every time we have Bible study on Wednesday nights, I listen. Huh? What do we do on Wednesday nights? We delve into the word. Alright? We get the word of God. And by getting the word of God, we get more faith. And when we get more faith, we please God more. And when we please God more, we get more of our needs being met. Huh? In other words, we become more mature. We become more successful or more satisfied. A successful person is somebody who has, in other words, if, if I compare Leroy and myself, if Leroy is more successful than I am, that means that he, he is getting more of his needs being met. So he's more successful than I am. In other words, he's more developed than I am because he's getting more of his needs being met. So if I want more of my needs being met, then I have to please God more. Huh? And, and I'm going to please God more when my faith develops or increases. And, and my faith is going to increase when I delve into the word of God. And that is why on Wednesday nights we shall have 30, 40, 50 people in Bible study. Because we're delving into the Word of God. Huh? Uh, I think David asked a question. What is going to keep you from sinning? And David says, the Word of God in my heart. Huh? The Word of God in my heart. You see, when I have the Word of God in my heart, I know how to respond to situations that come up. If I don't have the word in my heart, I would not know how to respond to situations. But when I have it in my heart, I know how God thinks. I know how God would behave. So I behave like God. I behave like Jesus. The word. The word. You see, we are seated in heavenly places. We are seated in heavenly places. And, and Sister Heaven's there working in the court. And she reminds me over and over that when you go into the court, which is, which is man made, you can't dress as you like, neither can you behave as you like. And if you can do that to please natural man, what about God? What about the Almighty God? Huh? So I'm saying, as a changed person, there is a, a, a kind of behavior that befits our position. What is it that our thoughts are not like God's thoughts? What is it that our ways are not like God's ways? Why? Huh? Because, because you're, de you're dealing with flesh and what? Spirit. Who is, who is 
Jesus' flesh. We are flesh. Huh? I, I listen to what the Bible says. Even when flesh is at its best, even, even when our righteousness is at its best, it still does not match. It still does not reach the standard of Jesus Christ our God. Huh? So he said, my thoughts are way above your thoughts. And that is why we should make sure that our thoughts come in line with the thoughts of God or Jesus Christ. And, and listen to me. If we could ever get our thoughts going the way that God wants them to go, man, there would, uh, in, in every family, there will be what? Peace. There will be joy. In every church, there will be peace. There will be joy. At every workplace, there will be peace and joy. Why? Because everybody is thinking like Jesus. Everybody is behaving like Jesus. There will be unity. But because of sin. Because of sin. Flesh is of the devil. Flesh is of the devil. Spirit is of God. 